Hello everyone. In this video, I want to show you the basics of how to use ExpressVPN, what all the available features are, and what you could use them for. And if you haven't purchased ExpressVPN yet, then you'll find links to special deals and discounts in the description below. So after installing the application from the website, be it Mac or Windows, you will have the same UI on all devices. The UI is designed to be as unobtrusive as possible, taking only what it needs out of the screen, not more and not less. It's very easy to read and understand for those who never used VPNs before, with a big on and off button, which you can use to have the VPN automatically connect or disconnect you from the server, which Express determines may be the best for you via the smart location feature. Of course, you can just use the VPN without ever checking the options and it'll work just fine, but you would be severely under using it. The first option from the drop down menu on the top left will show you all of the available locations and servers. You'll have a bunch of recommended locations on one list and the rest of the servers on the other list, which are neatly listed by continent. The next option will let you speed test some of the best available servers near you to find out which may suit you best in terms of download speed and ping. This is helpful in situations where you may want to find the fastest server for your downloads or if you're trying to game with the least amount of ping. It's a handy feature that will save you the hassle of experimenting with servers trying to find out which is the best for your needs. Though do note that while the speed test may not show you your true speed, it will still accurately show which servers may perform best. Now in the options section, ease of use is still very much taken into consideration. Everything is laid out very clearly with a little explanation. At the top, you have the startup options, which is self-explanatory. Underneath, you will see the network log section. And what this does is that it will sever your internet connection if your VPN disconnects unexpectedly. So if you didn't know, when you're connected to a VPN, you are connected to the VPN provider's servers, which are secured and encrypted. So if you may be living in a country where some online activities may be banned or could get you in trouble with your internet service provider or even the authorities if you're in a restrictive country, this kill switch feature will make sure to disconnect you from the internet if your VPN connection happens to get cut for whatever reason which will prevent your ISP from knowing what you're doing online and you will just appear offline on their monitored servers. You won't be disconnected from the internet if you yourself turn off the VPN. This is only meant to act as a security measure to keep prying eyes from peeping at your data when you're using ExpressVPN. The option below the kill switch will allow access to devices on the local network. So if you're using wireless printers or some other device that's connected to your computer, you'll want to keep this checked. And the final feature in the general tab is split tunneling. And this will allow you to choose which applications run through the VPN tunnel and which are exempt from it, which is useful if you want to use your VPN on only a few selected apps and not your entire connection. Or if you do want to secure your entire connection, but keep certain apps from being affected by the VPN. This is a feature that is expected in all high quality VPNs. Up next in the protocol section, you could just stick with the automatic option and this will certainly do it for you. Express will always provide you with great results using this option. However, it may serve you well to understand these options a little more. For example, ExpressVPN's version of the recently developed popular WireGuard protocols is called Lightway. Lightway usually works best with streaming and unblocking geo-restrictions since it connects to any server almost instantaneously. It's a great protocol to use at all times, especially if you're on mobile devices. As for the advanced options on Lightway, I'd recommend to just leave that one up to Express to determine as it's not something very significant besides the fact that ChaCha20 is set to use less battery on mobile devices. Now, if security is of your concern and you want to use the safest protocol, then OpenVPN UDP is your best option. In ExpressVPN's case, OpenVPN will provide you with only slightly quicker download speeds and being an older protocol, it has proven itself to be the safest protocol given that it went through many audits in the past, proving that it's very secure. Though it is possible that Lightway may be more secure, 
It's just that we don't really have proof of that. Now, the TCP variant of OpenVPN is significantly slower than its UDP counterpart in terms of download speed. But if upload is prioritized, then you may get better upload speeds using TCP, though it may not always be the case, as TCP is only meant to be used in the case where UDP or lightweight may not be working. ICAF2 is a fast protocol, but only works on a handful of servers, so this is also just an option in case the others don't work, which is rarely the case. Same thing with L2TP, except this one provides less security, so it's not recommended since it's really just outdated at this point. In the browser section, you can download the browser extensions of ExpressVPN if you only want to use your VPN for browsing purposes. And finally, in the advanced tab, the first option will allow Express to take diagnostics information for purposes of improving their services, none of which can be traced back to you personally, of course, as proven in their audits, but you also have the option to opt out, which is always nice. Now, I would recommend that you leave the IPv6 leak protection option alone unless you are already into networking and you know what you're doing, in which case you may want to turn this off if you're trying to use an IPv6 IP address. As for the DNS, I would also recommend that you keep this checked since it will force the ExpressVPN DNS onto your device in order to prevent any data from leaking while you're connected to the VPN. So no third parties can intercept your DNS requests, no activity logs, faster DNS requests, no DNS hijacking, and no DNS blocking. This will add an extra layer of security and obfuscation while you're going on about your online activities. And if you didn't know, obfuscation means that your browsing data will look like any other regular online browsing activity and your ISP won't be able to tell that you're using a VPN in the first place. And this is especially helpful if you're browsing in restrictive countries where using a VPN may be illegal. Obfuscation is on by default in ExpressVPN. So now that you understand ExpressVPN, you can make educated decisions when choosing your options depending on your situation. And this applies to all other VPNs as well, so you will find this information to be relevant even when using other VPNs. And just a reminder that you'll find links to deals and discounts in the description below so that you can hopefully save some more cash if you decide to pick up ExpressVPN. If you learned something today, please like the video and feel free to ask me anything in the comments below. I'd be happy to answer all of your questions. And if you're interested in an in-depth review of ExpressVPN, I'll also link that in the description below. And subscribe if you want to stay up to date with future content. Have a wonderful day.